Hey everybody, Drew Sanaki with the Nerd Marketing Podcast. Today's guest is Tracy Migliaccio, who is running direct mail at a company called Human. It's a supplement wellness company. Um, but she has a long background in in DM, in, in direct mail. She ran direct mail at an apparel brand called Wolverine World, Worldwide. So that's Sperry, Keds, Merrill, Saucony, Harley Davidson Footwear, Hush Puppy, Caterpillar, um, and a lot more. And she ran direct mail at Vistaprint. And uh, we really go deep on direct mail, where it's been, where it's going, and why it's still a much more compelling channel than you think. And one that uh, really stacks up very well against meta on prospecting and against email on retention. So Hope you enjoy this podcast with Tracy. Thanks. Let me know what you're doing now at Human. Yeah. Um, right now is in the most current up-to-date time. We're looking for a programmatic partner. And I, you know, uh, not to tip my hand too soon, but we've uh, found one, wink, wink. Um, oh, so, nice. you're yeah. Turn this into a demo. There you go. Um, we're super, you know, super excited about the things that we can do and kind of taking DM to the next level. We've tapped out the old tried and true. So now moving into programmatic and really getting much better about that one to one communication with customers will right. help us get a leg up on the competition. So very exciting. Do you say it human or do you say it human? We say human. Uh, it's human to the power of N. So infinite. Okay. <laughs> You got to be a science person to get that one. I get it. I get it. Uh, yeah, but I was really excited to talk to you, not, you know, because of, of the possibility that we might work together, but more because of your background. You have been, I mean, I joke that no one who's been in direct mail is, is like under 40, like everybody's 40 and up. I'm, I'm fifties and it's just kind of, like you don't find people who are into direct mail or who built their career on direct mail as much. And you have, right? I definitely have. 25 years I've been doing it. Very long time. It was the first thing I did. I worked for an educational cataloger called Delta Education. They were based in New Hampshire. It's now school specialties. Um, and began working on their catalog. Genuine call center. People were sending in order forms or calling the call center and placing orders. The internet wasn't even there yet. Yeah, this um, was like the late 90s, right? You just absolutely. send out the catalog. With, they have to have an 800 number in there. Oh, absolutely. Call, to call to order. Absolutely. Or they fill out the order form and send it back in with the, with the money for your order. So definitely, um, I distinctly remember being either at a Namoa conference or a DMA conference, and I was still a baby back then. Um, and hearing people grumbling about this new internet and how email was going to destroy direct mail. And look at it, 25 years later, direct mail's going strong. In fact, it has longer staying power than email. And uh, well, that's I, what I, 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 that's yeah, what I, I want to dig into because that's a, you don't hear that. I mean, that's a contrary opinion, right? Like I would say most D2C brands and e commerce brands think that uh, email's already won. Not that it's a competition, but like nobody uses direct mail anymore. And I would say most of the people we, we've we sold to at Postpilot have never done direct mail before. So they are a little bit like, oh, I, th I didn't know that channel still existed. It's, it's baffling to me that people aren't tapping into the potential because when I look at the volume of orders and revenue I can generate on a single campaign compared to a single email campaign that may have, you know, seven cents to that same audience and have triple more of the volume, direct mail smokes email. It completely blows it out of the water. It is a trusted median. It's super tactile. You have to touch it and see it before someone disposes of it, where now people are just trained to go through their inbox and click, 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 and then just delete. They don't even have to open emails. Direct mail, yeah. you have to touch it. You see it. So there's two pieces of tactile, you know, um, impact there that can definitely help. And it's just, it's crazy that people don't do it. And yes, you know what? I think it comes down to the cost. Direct mail is so expensive when people look at that upfront thing. And, you know, I've, I've faced that every company I've been at compared to email. It is, 
but you're paying for something that's premium because email does not perform at the same level as direct mail. It just doesn't. You know, higher lifetime values, uh, higher AOVs, repeat rates. Again, it's that trusted piece. It's why it's why banks still use direct mail. It is a trusted medium and so more people to, should do it. Yeah, it's so and I'm skipping all over the place, but I, we've done a lot of tests where you take the same campaign, the same creative. Say you're running a, you know, a 10% off offer on this category of apparel and you send it to half to your email list and the other half, of the audience is direct mail. And yes, the email costs pennies to send and the direct mail is going to cost a lot relatively, but the volume you get, the, the response rate is so much higher from direct mail that it, it offsets the cost and you end up just getting orders of magnitude more in terms of revenue and ultimately profits off the direct mail send. It's absolutely the ROI, true. The ROI looks worse because it's, it's not based off the cost. Like the cost of email is so cheap, the ROI is going to be high. You're still going to have a positive ROI off direct mail, but I, I think what's lost is just the magnitude. It's, that is a, about. it's a great point. Um, it is, I think people do get hung up in, in the pricing. I think that they see the pricing and it throws them off because email is so cheap and there's an assumption that you can just accomplish marketing and brand search is super expensive too. And it's super successful. If you want something to work really well, unfortunately, sometimes it costs more. But if I were to mail a hundred people, not that I ever would, or email a hundred people, direct mail's performance that's uplift is a hundred times better. I mean, that conversion rate is so much stronger that it it just makes it worthwhile. You can ultimately give your customers less communication and drive more or as much revenue. Whereas email, so. you have to constantly bonk them on the head to try and get that conversion or to try and to try and drive the same amount of money. It's it's uh it's so why you're talking more more you're talking more about exist your existing list. Your existing Absolutely or list. and prospecting right. yeah, prospecting as well. Uh, again, it goes back to that trusted forum. Direct mail is seen as trusted. People are are more willing to try direct mail. I mean, I don't even know that people really do email prospecting anymore. It's flagged as spam and with CCPA, you know, people aren't doing it. At least with direct mail, you can. You can organically acquire or use social media to try and acquire. But again, DM, you can go out there. Uh, look alike modeling using your existing customer base to find people who look like it. You can still rent lists. It's very different than it used to be, but there's a lot of options with DM that there just isn't with email. In doing that head to head comparison, obviously there are other digital channels as well. Yeah, we yeah. see people, you know, we got compared to email on retention, on prospecting. It's more how we stack up against meta. Yeah. How DM stacks up against meta. Yeah. Do you have any, I mean, is that the, have you ever sort of done a head to head prospecting meta versus direct mail? I haven't. Although when we did do prospecting uh, in direct mail, I could see that my MER was dramatically stronger than what meta's was. So ultimately that's the cost of the program versus the returns. Um, Meta obviously has their own ways of targeting as well that, you know, direct mail has their secrets and Meta has, you know, their secrets. You can get into the groups that people like. Um, again, I just don't know that it's necessarily seen as, tr as trusted. And from a prospecting standpoint, trust is super important that people are, they need to be willing, if they're going to be willing to pay for something, they need to know that it's not going to be a scam or that they're actually going to get what they pay for. So like, I let's, let's pause for a second. I want to go through your, your career here, <laughs> maybe not all 25 years, but at least it looks st like starting in at Vistaprint, you were doing direct mail. Absolutely. I was and at Vistaprint we'll... for six years and that's an e-com company that brought direct mail in. We did lots of great stuff at Vistaprint, I mean, uh, external like modeling a... and. Right. So what, what, yeah. What were they doing on direct mail? Uh, when I came, it was very spray and pray. Um, they also did prospecting through FSIs and bell packs and, and programs like that. Um, small return. We found that leaning into business cards, 
what is the one thing that a new business needs is our business cards back. We're talking when people still use them. And, and then it was still on the edge of shifting to something slightly different. So we began um, targeting new businesses as a specific source of who needed new business cards. And that's kind of how we went that way from prospecting. But we did catalogs. Um, we launched a catalog, um, did external modeling, participated in some co-ops, we did a lot of good things, definitely data related. I'm a proponent of data. Data is it. I mean, you can send the most stunning package to the wrong person and it's not going to work. You can right. send something that is old time, black and yellow and looks, you know, hideous. But if it's to the right person, then you have a, a greater yeah. chance of that return. So right. data's king. And then you went from there to Wolverine, which was kind of interesting and probably more relevant to the audience for this podcast because it's a family of brands. For those who don't know, Wolverine, Sperry, Keds, Merrill, Saucony, Harley Davidson, Hush Puppies, Caterpillar. Did I miss any? Um, Stride Right. That's they sold off Stride Right, but the kids' shoes. I mean, I grew up with Stride Right shoes, so same. Yeah. yeah. So you're so these are now. Uh, I guess you'd call Wolverine was a, is an aggregator and they were, um, how did they use direct mail across the portfolio? Absolutely. Um, each brand handled it differently. Um, Merrill and Sperry were the two largest mailers. So they would do um, triggers from welcoming VIPs to site abandoners who left and uh, abandoned products in their cart or just abandoned the site. So some retargeting. Um, they would do uh, large piece mailings that just welcomed as the seasons changed. This is the new product line. No offers with still tremendous amount of success. So Wolverine definitely mixed up how they used it. Each brand again was different. The big win that we had there was the retargeting. Um, it was kind of what I had leaned into when I came in. It was a program that I wanted to launch. Uh, it really let me grow the revenue by over 200 percent so it was just awesome while i was there and retargeting yeah and in with i i would say with retargeting and you mentioned other retention or sort of post-purchase things like well you said abandoned carts and second vip campaigns these were all i've read some data that says on retention or post-purchase like postcards on acquisition catalogs or more real estate do you is there data behind that or have you found that to be the case like when you think prospecting you want more real estate to put more products in front of a, a potential customer and and on the other side you can do more you can get away with a postcard i've done head-to-head -head tests response is definitely stronger on the larger piece the cost is typically the deciding factor and right it, it drives down that uh, ROAS. So when it's not, it, you know, it really depends on what a company is looking for. If they're looking to acquire more customers and aren't necessarily worried about the efficiency of the campaign, then definitely a bigger piece. Um, it, it, it also comes down to that, I go back to data at that target audience. If there is a chance that it's the right person and that's ultimately what it is, more real estate might make it worthwhile. Um, a postcard is very quick and it needs to be, I lean into offers and postcards because you have that two seconds and it has to be big, bold and in your face. You need to get that decision to either keep or, you know, destroy. So a postcard, you know, it's front, back, trash or front, back, keep. Whereas a catalog, it's a little heavier, it's a little sure. bulkier. It might come inside and make it to the counter. Someone might flip through it. It has longer shelf life where postcards just don't have that staying power. Um, it really comes down to what the ultimate goal of the company is. You know, conversion is definitely higher and a bigger piece because of that staying power. But if ROAS is king, then something that's less expensive will outperform a catalog from a ROAS standpoint. Catalog's pretty expensive. Post right. office does not seem to be letting up in postal increases. So right. it's getting expensive to mail. Catalogs are heavy and um, I don't think that a full size, you know, oversized piece that's not letter rate. I can't imagine that, that will have long term staying power 
with direct mail. It's just, they're getting too expensive now to mail. It's, you know, now it's Slim Jim size where it's a letter rate and it's tall and narrower. So it'll fit into that. It's a little, it's more cost effective. It's again, it's, you lose some customers every time you take the size down a bit, but if ROAS is the important piece, the less expensive is better. Yeah. I always think of, um, postcards is more like, uh, I, we have customers that ask how to design the postcard and I'm like, well, you've done Facebook ads. It's just like, it's a, it's a visual, it's an ad, you know, it's, you need a strong call to action. Some, maybe some urgency in there, some personalization, like, Hey, this is on sale yep. this week. Buy Singular it. focus. Yeah. The bigger real estate, you can tell a little bit more of your brand story. Um, do some interesting things with photography and, um, so I was yeah, curious your experience. So these, these yeah, absolutely. Are, At Merrill, we brilliant. actually moved out of full size catalogs and took them down to trifolds. It performed again on the conversion, not quite as good, but the ROAS was stronger, and so that was the route we decided to go and actually made that shift. We see that a lot. We've got a this trifold format. This is from a brand called Hexclad. Oh, okay. Can, yes, I like Hexclad cookware. Yeah, they can sort of tell that it's not focusing, but you can tell That's okay. they tell their story inside of three panels and uh, works really well because these are pretty inexpensive and you can get them out on demand. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, the, is any, do you know of any brands that have grown? I get this question a lot on, on prospecting. Any brands come to mind that grew almost entirely off of catalog without any digital spend? I mean, you go back to the, to the big boys. I mean, Bean made their their stand in catalog. So did Land's End, Cuddle Down. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think to look, of stores that I, don't I'd have at, brick and mortar presence. Yeah, I'd love to look at what they do today. I mean, yeah. I still get the L.L. Bean catalog in. I do as I well. Um, and now I think with the catalog, I'll earmark pages or it's more of a magazine in my mind. I'm still placing the order online. And although I'm an old school direct mailer, I hope they're doing matchbacks because I'm the worst. I am not taking the time to enter any codes from the back of the catalog. I can't be bothered. Super simple, quick and easy. Right. I'm going online. And unless there's some kind of coupon or discount associated with it, it's just not, it's not going to happen. And I have to imagine they are doing matchbacks. Yeah. So what's, I guess, how do you, what are you doing with direct mail now at, at Human? No, sure. Um, the bulk of what we do is all retention. We have done, as I had shared that when we looked at, uh, compared against Meta, we didn't do a head-to-head -head test, but we did uh, do some prospecting and it was a full size, eight and a half by 11 size catalog. So it was far more expensive in prospecting. Um, but we're doing mostly retention mostly postcards. We went through a phase where we were focusing on uh, profitability. And so that was taking down costs and postcards mm -hmm. allow us to do that. So we mail two Slim Jim size catalogs a year and everything else are postcards, which means singular focus, offer driven. They're not necessarily pretty or sexy or, you know, over the top styling singular focus, focusing on one product or a holiday and here's your discount. And that's really the bulk of what we do. Moving forward, we're going to be able to do all sorts of testing that we're unable to do. I think one of the drawbacks with direct mail is it can be, I've always called it the tortoise. It takes, sure. you know, 90 days from creative start to mail in home, finish, flow through the program. And that's a long time to wait for performance results. You're doing other programs while that's going live. Programmatic with that quick daily dropping, you can get a read as soon as you have, you know, significance, and then you mm -hmm. can move right on to the next thing. There is no waiting until the campaign exhausts itself. Um, and they're super large volumes, although profitable, um, again, testing can be riskier. If you're yeah. doing a 50-50, and something just doesn't work, you know, that's half of your campaign that has underperformed expectations. It can be challenging. So programmatic sure. definitely allows that nimbleness and uh, being more flexible in how you do things. So that's I think exciting. one thing that's, that's often hidden in the data is like you mentioned it earlier, uh, that we've seen some data that suggests that 
customers you acquire through direct mail spend more, higher lifetime values, higher AOVs, right? Um, and so you've got to more, you've got to look at more than just the first purchase. You've got to see what that customer, you know, that you might acquire them via a, a Slim Jim or or some sort of catalog. They come in, they buy, and then maybe they come when they come back, they're clicking through your email program or clicking on a paid ad. Um, and so if you just look at the one purchase per customer in Google Analytics, you're going to see it attributed to email and paid. And then over here, you're going to see the catalog, which doesn't really track in Google Analytics, and that costs a lot of money, so we're going to cut it. Yeah. When, in fact, you've just cut the the thing that's feeding the whole these high lifetime value customers into your whole marketing program. Yeah, so I, I, how, how have you, I guess, how have you gotten your head around that or done that analysis, like where you look at, do you use any tools to, to track from initial acquisition all the way through? Yeah, I've been lucky that I've worked with some super great analysts in my past. And so we've done testing and they can get at and dig into data um, mm. far more granularly than I can. And just, you know, that kind of shows some of the things you see. If you look at all the touches that someone gets or how that direct mail piece lifts as they go through, um, it kind of com it compounds everything to see that ultimate value. Yeah. We definitely see that digital people aren't as responsive through direct mail. And I'm okay with that because they're not as valuable. I want the good people who have come on through TV or through radio, who've called the call center, people with like habits will perform similarly when they get something like direct mail and it drives them to the call center or another non-digital path. And I think that's some of what is important for people to understand their customers and how they might respond or might act. What are like audiences? People might think direct mail and email are very similar. They're not. Um, a lot of times people on email come in through uh, discounts because that's the way that the email stays or they're constantly getting emails and they're flagging or saving, bookmarking that email for use when they want to buy. Direct mail is not as frequent. Um, Although the offer, obviously the carrot is helpful, um, but that once they come in, just that offline to, to coming in and responding online, you know, when someone commits that way, it helps even increase that value. Someone who responds through an offline channel, they've already, it's why the conversion rates are so high because yep. they've already done the work. They've already committed, gone to their computer to take action, whereas emails all electronic, they just click or click through the same with paid search. So it's really just, I think it's the experience that helps bolster it. Do you, uh, so have you run TV and radio ads too? Um, human does. Yes. Yeah. How, how do they do those other channels? Um, they do super good. I mean, they're top of the funnel halos bringing in, you know, acquisition customers. But it's that response method for us that really makes it beneficial. People through direct mail, a lot of people go to the call center. We're also courting an older audience. Um, so when radio or TV goes to the call center, it's that similar behavior. And these people tend to perform super strongly in direct mail. So you use that TV, radio, and some and top of the funnel content to drive You've got it. Ideally to the call center. Yeah. Um, direct mail then plays sort of middle of the funnel. Or 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 lower. Absolutely. Yep. Because it's 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 got the power of targeting where some other channels really can't. They were kind of um, with search, you're kind of coming around. If somebody has searched for a term, you're coming in from behind saying, OK, we think you want this. Um, direct mail can actually target, you know, Joe Smith, who wants xyz or has bought therefore you know product recommendations are yeah. a b and c so there's a lot of targeting um dm is just it goes back to the data yeah. you know it's it makes everything it's funny there is this perception that direct mails for like older customers that they respond well and it's like i don't there's a lot there's also a lot of data out there primarily put out by the postal service that millennials, Gen Z, Gen, they all respond to direct mail, right? So I don't, 
which I believe, but I, I also don't dispute you know, that as I, I'm thinking of my parents and like at some point you're just not on the internet as much and you are That's still true. checking your mail. So um, what I will say to that is um, the audience base for Vistaprint and for Wolverine, those are not, you know, septuagenarians. They are a younger crowd and they're responding in direct mail. So right. there's less competition in the mailbox now. People pay bills online or automatically. They don't even have to get a bill anymore. Um, people get excited about getting something in the mail at Christmas. If you can lean into that, um, to something that can work tremendously well. Um, I actually Amazon, am, Amazon well, brought back the catalog this Christmas. It's so true. And actually, I, I got a Wayfair one this year as well. Another Boston right. company. Yeah. Um, and so I think they were definitely it was a holiday gift guide. So people are starting to do it. I think that if they look at that as a singular point, they'll be disappointed. It's really a holistic thing and how you communicate with your customers. Um, I don't know that a one off is going to perform as expected. Wayfair is definitely an online company that created that, you know, that kind of customer base. Sending a catalog is very different, although Vistaprint was successful in being able to pivot from off uh, online to offline. So it takes right. work. You have to stay with it longer periods of time. And my recommendation to them would be to mail more frequently if they wanted to try and build a program. I think a one-off would be disappointing. I'm, I'm really curious to see what you do because <laughs> it's so... It's all great advice. I, I mean, when, when you look back at, at your career, what can, can you think of, do any campaigns stand out as some of the best direct mail campaigns you've seen? You know, it's something that you guys offer, and I, I'm very excited that you do. Um, there's a technology called Genuinely Penned. It's how one company branded it, but it is the physical ballpoint pen. Oh, yeah. Filling yeah. out, yeah. So filling out cards um, while I was at Vistaprint. During holiday, their focus shifts from B to B to B and C and promoting holiday cards. We did a campaign where we did a blind address that had a uh, standard class stamp, but customers don't necessarily see that. And it was a handwritten or machine with pen written card. Uh, and it was gangbusters because and it was a card wishing people happy holidays. But of course, we did the carrot. Um, to come and get holiday cards from Vistaprint, that the unmarked envelope, the handwriting, you know, that had like almost a hundred percent impression. Nobody gets that because people are going to think it's a Christmas card. It's in that kind of an envelope. Um, so I always called that my evil genius move. That was one of the best programs, one of the most memorable programs I've ever done. It's uh, it's funny because it, I mean, obviously we can't verify this, but you got to think the open rate on an envelope is 99%. You know, you get a, you get an, un, they, they show up in a unmarked envelope with just a handwritten, your address and your name, you're going to open that. And uh, it's, I would say I most you, people don't even know that there's technology out there that can do it. Consumers sure. are going to see it and think they're getting a card. That's half the battle. You've got them to open it. You know, right. it's it's every second you can keep that piece of mail in someone's hand. It's closer to commitment. And um, it's just awesome the, technology. It's something that I'm looking forward to implementing this holiday. Yeah, season. We, we read some data. A brand had basically bifurcated their customers. They sent half of them uh, handwritten thank you notes and they sent the other half like the same thank you note in email. And the half that got the handwritten thank you note went on to spend twice as much. It was like twice the future lifetime value. And the theory is that, you know, you have a little bit of a human touch. It can be a handwritten note. It can be talking to somebody on the phone. Um, you go on to spend more with the brand. Absolutely. So I, you know, not to, yeah. not to tip the hand on, you know, with the average consumer, but people just don't know that that technology is there. They think that it is a handwritten card. It's how I intend to use it at human is uh, a, a Christmas card. They're going to think that someone at human sent them a Christmas card. I would love human. to do inbox cards. Sure. You know, it's just like you said, that human touch. Now the company I think who's doing it really well right now, and I still don't know how they do it. My gut is it's actually a person is chewy. 
I was just saying, Chewy, I mean, they, they sort of made their name on, I was talking to a Chewy marketer the other day and said, you know, the founder knew there was not a lot to dif that differentiated the product from what Amazon had. So they had to differentiate the, the brand experience. And at one point I read they had like a warehouse filled with people writing handwritten notes. Um, I mean, this was obviously before the technology, but writing yeah. the handwritten notes to customers. So uh, if it wasn't in a marker, I, I would think that it was technology. I, I, it's in a marker. I've received I've received cards in multiple colors and there's yeah. just no way it's not blue and black. It's fluorescent pink and green. And I'm like, somebody's actually doing this. Um, when you stop and think of how much money the average person pays for pets, though, it's so smart. And they, they yeah. I think between that handwriting piece and their subscription, like they have set the mark, they've set the bar on what is expected. They did a great That's job. Great. Well, they did thanks for, uh, thanks for spending a half hour with me, Tracy. That time flew way by real fast. Yeah, this was fun. Um, it's always good to talk to a practitioner of, uh, direct yeah. mail when somebody who's done it and, and done it well. So, um, Thank you. I, mean, I am yeah, definitely really a super nerd. Story. I did not, I did not uh, divest. I stayed right on the direct mail path. I've just kind of done different things. So it's awesome. Yeah, I'd ask you what's next, but I guess you're still right in the thick of it at human. I absolutely am. Mm -hmm.